lecture, we are going to go over alaskirin, the one and only direct renin inhibitor. Being a direct renin inhibitor, alaskirin belongs to the antihypertensive category. Alaskirin is the only available direct renin inhibitor. It binds to the renin, stops renin from catalyzing the conversion between angiotensinogen and angiotensin 1. In other words, alaskirin stops the cascade of RAS at the very early stage, and it covers a rather full range of these chain reactions. Lacks of angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2, vessels dilate, and blood pressure drops. Lacking angiotensin 2, adrenal-renal responses are affected. Sodium and water are not reabsorbed. As a result, cardiac burden is decreased and blood pressure is dropped. Alaskirin is indicated for hypertension only. It may be used alone or in combination with other medications to treat hypertension. Alaskirin is well tolerated. The most reported adverse effects are headache, dizziness, and fatigue. GI disturbances like abdominal pain, diarrhea, dyspepsia, and gastroesophageal reflux are dose-related. Cough is really rare. Hyperkalemia does not happen unless used with ACE inhibitors. As a medication working on RAS, alaskirin is not to be used during pregnancy or breastfeeding. Diabetic patients who use ARBs or ACE inhibitors are not a good candidate for alaskirin therapy. Cyclosporine can increase the alaskirin's effect. Patients who use cyclosporine should not take alaskirin. Alaskirin should be used with caution in patients who have renal problem or history of angioedema. When taking care of patients who take alaskirin, we should teach the client the adverse effects and how to manage the adverse effects. At the beginning of therapy, patient can likely develop lightheadedness, dizziness, etc. These are hypotensive symptoms. Warn the patient so and assure the client that these symptoms usually go away after a few days. Teach the client prevention of orthostatic hypotension, like getting out of bed slowly in the morning. It is important for the patient to monitor blood pressure and heart rate every day, preferably before administering the medication. As a matter of fact, monitoring blood pressure and heart rate is a standard nursing intervention for any patient who takes any medication that can affect blood pressure or heart rate. Teach the female client to report pregnancy immediately as this medication is teratogenic. We need to stop the medication and use alternative medication as soon as possible. Teach the client the interactions between alaskirin and other medication or food. Fruit juice and high-fat meal could decrease the therapeutic level of alaskirin. Teach the client to use salt substitutes only as prescribed. Teach the client to call 911 if experiencing symptoms of heart attack. Monitor CBC, electrolytes, renal function, and urine analysis because this medication could cause electrolytes imbalances and affect renal functions. Patients should take the medication at the same time every day. Warn the patient that the effect of alaskirin will be evident two weeks after initiating or adjusting therapy. Medications antagonizing RAS can increase the effects or rather adverse effects to each other. Therefore, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, aldosterone antagonists can increase risks of hypotension, renal impairment, and hyperkalemia if used with alaskirin. Cyclosporin and etroconazole are not recommended to be used with alaskirin because these medications can increase blood level of alaskirin, leading to severe adverse effects. Alaskirin can decrease the effect of furosemide if used together. NSAIDs and medication increasing potassium concentration can add to the risk of hyperkalemia. Rifampid decreases alaskirin's plasma concentration. A larger dose of alaskirin may be indicated if the patient also takes rifampin. 
fruit juice, and high-fat meals decrease the effect of early skewing. Patient might need further monitoring for effectiveness if taken high-fat meals. Thank you for spending time taking this lecture. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.